everyone. I'm thrilled to be with you once again, worshiping God, sharing truth from the Bible, and learning amazing things from God's Word. Friends, it's almost Christmas. I can't believe it. We're just a few days away. It's true. Christmas is my very favorite time of the year. I love all the Christmas music, lights, trees, treats, and presents. This time of year is so fun, and it's a great time to celebrate because we have the best news ever. The story of Christmas is something we need to share with others. Have you ever shared the story of Christmas with anyone? In this Christmas story, I love how we see that the shepherds told everybody about Jesus. They didn't keep the news to themselves. They spread the news that Jesus was born, as we read in Luke chapter two, verse twenty. The shepherds returned. They gave glory and praise to God. Everything they had seen and heard was just as they had been told. As we approach Christmas, let's give glory, honor. And praise to our Savior, who was born to us. God gave us Jesus, the greatest gift in the history of everything. Indeed, Christmas is the perfect time of the year to talk about giving. Have you ever gotten a gift that you really, really wanted? How about the other way round? Have you ever given someone something that they really, really wanted? Or how about this? Has anyone here given someone a gift, but you weren't really sure if they liked it? It's hard to get something you're not really thrilled with, as much as it's difficult to see someone not like a gift you thought they'd love. God gave us Jesus, the best gift in history. And a lot of people were pretty excited that the Savior had finally come. The big question is this: Even if you received everything you wanted for Christmas, how can you still focus on the best gift, Jesus? Pretty good question, and the answer can be found in Luke chapter two. Last week. We talked about how Mary was an ordinary girl living in an ordinary town. Then God sent an angel to visit her. The angel told Mary that she would give birth to Jesus and that he would be the Son of God. Mary was probably shocked and scared, but she chose to trust God, just as the angel had said. She became pregnant. Today, we will continue with our Christmas story from Chapter Two of the Book of Luke, and I have invited、Kieran. to read Luke Chapter Two, Verse One to Seven for us. I'll be reading from the Book of Luke, Chapter Two, Verse One to Seven. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued. A decree that the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor over Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Gad- Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature. 
What's up everybody? My name is Jacob. And if nobody said it to you yet, let me be the first to say Merry Christmas! Joy to the world, the Lord has come. We all know what Christmas is about, right? It's about Christmas pie! Or Christmas is actually about a big guy in a red suit. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Christmas is about watching movies. Truth is, Christmas is about a lot of things, but there is one thing that makes this whole season worth celebrating. You know what I'm talking about. It's the presents. Let's see what we got this week. Oh. This little baby is what all the fuss is about. This is Christmas. Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. You'd think that a gift from God would come in a larger package, not just a baby. There's gotta be more to it than just that. You're right, there's a lot more to it. And it all starts in Bethlehem. I'll see you later. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Mary's world had been turned upside down. Though she was an ordinary girl living in an unimportant town, God had sent an angel to visit her. God is very pleased with you. Me? You're talking to me? You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. Mary was probably shocked, overwhelmed, and maybe fearful, but she chose joy. She chose to trust that God loved her so much, he had given her an important part to play in his story. I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. Just as the angel had said, Mary became pregnant, and the months raced by. Mary and her new husband, Joseph, prepared for the brand new baby to arrive. A cradle. I'll make him the most beautiful cradle you've ever seen. Joseph was a carpenter and took pride in creating smooth tables and sturdy cartwheels, but his work was soon interrupted. Mary, Joseph, and every person in the tiny town of Nazareth streamed out of their homes. A messenger on a dusty horse skidded to a stop in the small town market. Is this really a town? It doesn't deserve a dot on the map. As the people of Nazareth watched from a careful distance, the messenger pulled out a scroll and cleared his throat. Hear ye, hear ye. Caesar Augustus orders that everyone must go to their town of origin to be counted. Can't you just count us now? One. Two, three. No, no. The counting must be done properly and in order so we can make you pay lots of taxes. Farewell, and by that I mean good riddance. Mary and Joseph and their neighbors were left <coughs> coughing in the dust. Joseph, we'll have to go to Bethlehem where your family is from. I'll go. You can't travel right now. Of course I can. Absolutely not. A short time later, Mary and Joseph set off on the long road to Bethlehem. Perhaps they recalled the words of the prophet Micah. Bethlehem, you might not be an important town in the nation of Judah, but out of you will come for me a ruler over Israel. It's possible Mary rode on a donkey, or she might have walked right alongside Joseph. Either way, the journey took nearly a week and camping wasn't very comfortable for a woman about to have a baby. Please tell me your cousins will have a bed for us. Great Aunt Ada is the perfect hostess. But when they reached Bethlehem, the little town was neither silent nor still. It looks like everyone else came home too. <sighs> well, if Aunt Ada doesn't have room, there's always Cousin Gideon. He, oh, he makes an excellent pigeon pie. But not a single one of Joseph's relatives had a spare room or an extra bed. Please, just anywhere. This baby is coming soon. At last, someone found them room in a place where the animals stayed. 
Absolutely not. We'll take it. Mary and Joseph did everything they could to get the space ready for a new baby. Clean hay, fresh water, and in a short time, Mary's baby was born. It's a boy! His name is Jesus. Mary tore a clean cloth into wide strips and tightly wrapped her baby to keep him warm and cozy. No cradle? Where will he sleep? Put fresh hay in the animal's feeding trough. We'll lay him in there. What about the sheep? They don't mind. Mary lay her tiny baby in the clean hay, the king of the whole world, sleeping in a manger next to the animals. He's perfect. Yes, he is. In the most unexpected place, at the most unexpected time, God had shown his love. He sent his very own son as a baby to rescue the whole world. Do you want to know what Christmas is really about? Ho, ho, ho! No! Christmas is about love. Around 2,000 years ago, God saw that the world needed help, and he loved the world so much that he sent this baby. But he is way more than just a baby. You see, Jesus would grow up and live a perfect life, and even though he didn't deserve it, out of love, he would die on a cross to pay for the sins of the world. And that was just the help we needed. That was just the love we needed. Jesus made it possible for us to have a relationship with God. Jesus saved us. So, while you're celebrating this year, while you're singing and eating pie and opening presents, don't forget this present that God gave to us. Don't forget this one thing. God loved us so much that he gave us a savior. So, you know what? It's Christmas! Let's have the biggest party ever! Who's with me? Yeah! Let's party! It's Christmas! It's Christmas! Yeah! We're going shopping for that Christmas pie! Ooh, I need that! I need this! I need Christmas bread!
about what Mary gave. Think about what she gave up. Mary and Joseph were entrusted with basically raising God as a person. Mary gave up what she wanted. Both of them did. They gave up their plans and trusted God's plan. They trust God no matter what. There are times when we have our plans, our wants, our desires, but sometimes God changes those plans. In those moments, do we trust God? Do we trust that God's plan is a good one? The good news is that yes, we can. We can trust God. The fact that Jesus was born at all is proof of that we can trust God no matter what. God said He would give us a Savior and He sent Jesus. God showed us how much He loves us by sending us His only Son. John 3.16 God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. Anyone who believes in Him will not die, but will have eternal life. Jesus is the greatest gift that's ever been given. This Christmas, as you celebrate, take a moment to realize just how much God loves you. Take your focus off your plans and place it squarely on God's plan. It may just change the way you think about this season. Give thanks for Jesus who was born for you and me. Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is our joy. So let's sing Joy to the World together. Joy to the world, the world has come. Let earth receive her King. And every heart the pale hang will. I have an nature sing. I have an nature sing. I have in a heaven a nature sing. Happy birthday, Jesus. In a few more days, it is Christmas Day, and it's Jesus' birthday. So let's sing Happy Birthday to Jesus. One, two, three. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, dear Jesus. Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Scarlett, what are you giving this Christmas? Presents, love, and helping people. Mm. You and our family are giving three donations to an organization called Holiday Handfuls, wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. What are you giving this Christmas? Love. So Cecily, what are you giving this Christmas? So, one picture that I made for Mommy and Day, and the one to give for Dad Quinn. And Winter, what are you giving this Christmas? Presents, happiness, Kindness, loving, and joyfulness, and making people laugh. Oh, thanks. This Christmas, me and my family are giving few donations to an organization called Holiday Ham Crews, wishing everyone a fairy. Happy Christmas and a good new year in advance. 
These are great things to give to people this Christmas. Or another question is, what are you giving up this Christmas? Mary gave up an ordinary, predictable life and gave everything of herself to have Jesus as her son. Maybe God is asking us to give something big this year too. It's not an easy thing to grapple with and it's not a simple answer. Remember, God loved us so much that He gave us a Savior. He gave us what we needed most. He gave us the greatest gift in the history of the world. God gave us His Son. If we believe and put our faith in Jesus, we can have a relationship with God that will last forever. Let's pray and thank God for His amazing gift. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for loving each and every person here at Hartwood Baptist Church. You love us so much that you sent your only Son to be our Savior, to save us from our sins so that we could be a part of your family forever. Jesus is the ultimate example of God's love for us. Thank you for sending the angel to visit Mary and to tell her that her son would be our Savior. God, you had a plan for Mary and you have a plan for us. Your plans are much better than our plans. Thank you that we can trust you no matter what. As we celebrate Christmas, please help us remember the true meaning of this special season. Thank you for Jesus. Jesus really is the biggest gift the world has ever known. The real meaning of Christmas is always something to celebrate. Thank you for your gift of Jesus. We love you, Father God, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember this Christmas that God loved us so much that He gave us a Savior. As you celebrate Christmas, take time to think about how much God really loves you. He gave you the greatest gift ever, Jesus. Christmas always reminds me that I can trust God no matter what. Because He loves me, He sent Jesus for me. Our memory verse, Luke 2 verse 11, reminds us what Christmas is all about. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. It's also a great time to share about Jesus and the story of Christmas with someone you know. Think about someone you could share the story with. So call him or her this week and tell them the story of Christmas. I'll see you next time. Merry Christmas.